Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm finally back with another video. Again, I do apologize as usual. I've been super, super busy and stressed out and stuff with, uh, with work and everything just happening. So I do apologize for the delays. Uh, I am working on it, but uh, it's just a matter of getting to things when I have time. So uh, anyway, I had a few minutes to sit down here and go over some, uh, some cool news that has been flying around that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Uh, I got some pickups recently as well that I'd like to show you guys, as well as some uh, guests for the upcoming Edmonton Expo in September. There's already been a few names announced, which are uh, quite interesting as well. So anyway, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so first just getting into a little bit of news. There's been some stuff going on lately with this Jason universe. I'm not sure how many of you have uh, heard of it, but uh, there's this basic new thing that Horror Inc. and Sean Cunningham have, uh, have launched called the Jason universe. So I guess in a nutshell, what I've gathered it means is they're basically going to be marketing the crap out of everything and uh, you're going to see Jason all over the place now. Pretty much everywhere except on the big screen where everybody wants to see him. So that is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I mean it's good that they're doing some marketing and stuff and you're going to see Jason in you know, more video games and stuff like that. Great. but. Uh, yeah, uh, I would really like to see a new film happen. I'm sure most of you would as well. Uh, the TV series thing that they're apparently still doing. Um, I mean, I have some interest in that, sure. But is it what I want? Not really. You know, I just, I'd like a movie, you know. Uh, I'm not sure how a series would work. I mean, maybe it wouldn't be bad. Who knows? But uh, it would be something. Uh, it's just too bad about the whole movie thing. So, uh, what I did hear though is this Jason Universe brand is now following a bunch of different, uh, you know, personalities on social media, and one of them is Friday the Thirteenth, the game, which is, uh, you know, a really popular game, one of my favorites of all time. But they were. Uh, basically finishing because the license was running out by December of this year, 2024. So that was pretty much going to be the end of the game. Now they're saying, well, Jason Universe is following the game now. And, you know, there was uh, uh, some really cool news that came out that was saying there's going to be a playable sort of fan made version like fan finished version of Friday the 13th the game that they were going to launch, you know, sort of in an underground way on uh, consoles as well as PC. And, you know, it started to really get some, some legs and, you know, a lot of people were talking about it. And then a few days went by and I heard the announcement that there was a, you know, cease and desist order uh, against the project from Horror Inc. So I suppose Sean or the company got wind of it and said, uh, 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 so that really sucks. But at the same time, if they're following Friday the 13th, the game, I don't know, there is some kind of glimmer of hope that maybe we're going to get, you know, new content on the game. Maybe they'll renew the license because it's been successful. You know, there's a lot of signs pointing to it maybe being a possibility because of the recent fan-made, you know, updates that they were saying we're going to launch and we're going to launch the modes they wanted to do originally and stuff. Uh, I forget what it was, panic mode or something. There's a, a bunch of different uh, add-ons that were supposed to be coming to this game, like the Grendel map for the, the spaceship from Jason X, as well as Jason X as a, as, as a killer. I know he's been... Uh, on PC for a long time, and I know they've finished versions of uh, the Grendel map and stuff as well on PC, but never on console. So I thought it'd be neat to uh, to see, and it sounded like it was coming before <laughs> they killed it. But I thought, well, if you saw there's that much interest, 
and you own the rights, wouldn't you think, hmm, maybe we're leaving a little bit of money here, you know what I mean? It makes you wonder. So, uh, I'm only taking it with a grain of salt. I think we're going to be really lucky if they keep working on Friday the 13th, the game, or decide to do that. Um, I hope they do, but I'm not getting my hopes up, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, the only other thing I see where maybe they consider it is because some of the more recent horror games that have dropped, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a good one, uh, Evil Dead the game, which was before that, uh, they got a pretty decent following and then they started to sort of fizzle out a little bit. I mean, there's still problems I know of all uh, with TCM, you know, Texas Chainsaw, uh, you know, getting full lobbies and stuff and even being able to even have games and people were leaving because people were getting, you know, so badly dominated. There really wasn't, there wasn't a sort of a soft learning curve. Once you knew how to play, you were going to get destroyed fast by people that know how to play. So that made it kind of unfun <laughs> for a lot of new players, which I get. So of course they want to quit and then people are pissed off. They can't find games, etc., etc. I know it's still a problem and they're you know, introducing penalties and stuff, but I think the, the better solution for that would be to have some kind of offline mode where people can learn the moves and learn how to play on like bots and stuff, you know, kind of like they did in Friday the 13th game. At least then you could get your controls down so that when you are out there facing all these people, at least you, you know what you have to do and you know how to do it. Maybe you're not very good at it yet, but at least you know what you're doing. So I think that would help a lot, but I, again, I don't see that happening. Uh, another game that just launched recently is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've been waiting for that one for a little while. Um, I pre-ordered that as well, and uh, I have played it a handful of times, and it's, uh, I found it to be a pretty fun game. It's, you know, it's really bright and colorful, and, and, uh, uh, it's I I found it's not very hard to play like it is fairly easy to to play but of course same kind of things happen when you jump in with people that know what they're doing you don't last very long but the only advice there is just keep playing it and get better while uh, while it's still a fairly new game because people are only going to be getting better you know but uh, overall I thought it was a fairly easy game to uh, to play and get around and uh, it was fun you know I only got to play as a clowns uh, two or three times I think after that it was pretty much all victim and you can't really choose one or the other so I don't know it is a fun game though and I thought worth uh, worth having in the collection so I guess we'll see how the growth goes with that one but uh, still no Halloween game I don't know what's going on there like what the hell or even scream or something cool like that I'd, I'd like to see that all right, and some other really awesome news. They finally released some details on that upcoming 4K release of 1986's Trick or Treat. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, I know a lot of, lot of people are. It seems to have a pretty strong cult following. But uh, it was announced a while back that they were going to be releasing it in 4K. Um, I think I heard about it. was probably about a year ago or so. Um, certainly summertime, I think. But I remember, you know, wishful thinking they'd have it out in time for, for Halloween last year. And oh no. <laughs> but I do remember reaching out to, uh, to uh, Synapse about, you know, any details or when it might be coming, you know, and they really didn't, they didn't know. They said we have to reach out to uh, Red Shirt. I think that's the company that is producing it. But it was released that, um, you know some some of the details that we're going to get with it it sounds exciting brand new 4k restoration from the original camera negative approved by the original dop three discs 4k blu-ray regular blu-ray original soundtrack cd licensed by sony three different thick chipboard slip cases to choose from with new artwork on each with vinegar syndrome style slip sleeves over the criterion style disc case itself featuring the original theatrical artwork on one side and UK quad art on the other side. Rock and Shock feature-length documentary, tribute to Sammy Kerr actor Tony Fields, interviews with family, friends, never-before-seen photos, etc. 
three audio commentary tracks, one with the director, one with audio interviews with producer and writer, and one commentary track about satanic panic hysteria. 5.1 audio remix, 2.0 track, original stereo track as well, a still photo gallery so large it takes 25 minutes to go through, original Fastway music video for After Midnight, licensed by Sony. <sighs> there it is, Horrors Hollowed Grounds video, hosted by Sean Clark. Man, I was really hoping they were going to put that on there. That is awesome. That's one of my favorite horrors hallowed grounds episodes i've ever seen really glad it's on there uh they have trailers tv spots radio spots um the original electronic press kit 60 page booklet holy crap with linear notes essays pictures etc jeez there's even six double-sided postcards okay that's pretty wild uh, fold-out poster of the original uh, one sheet that's the theatrical one sheet of course and a replica of the Sammy Kerr autograph poster from Eddie's bedroom um, that was on his wall or whatever so that's pretty cool wow that is a lot of stuff plus there's these three available slip covers for it um, that's the thing about these three slipcovers. You might notice the awesome artwork from Justin Osborne, um, who did a design that made it onto uh, some Fright Rags uh, releases, as well as the ever talented Devin Whitehead, who's just amazing. He did this awesome design for uh, Cavity Colors, and uh, it looks like he loaned the artwork to. Uh, to this project as well but uh, I did see a post where he had mentioned that he actually had no idea that they were using more than one piece of artwork uh, for slipcovers so and uh, he mentioned the third artist which I'm not even going to mention his name I don't really know who he is I don't know his art but um, uh, Devin mentioned that he's had some of his stuff taken from this individual I don't know allegedly will say that he has borrowed or slash stolen designs from other artists and it's happened you know a lot more than once but um, yeah I, I honestly have never heard of this guy so personally I'm not going to be going for that slip cover I would probably go for for Devin's or Justin's I'm a big fan of both of those designs like I said I have a t-shirt for both of those from that particular film but um, yeah it looks like a pretty cool set Hey guys, just a quick update on the slipcover. What you're looking at now is the new slipcover C. It is by an artist by the name of Sean Longmore and look at how badass this thing looks. Now I'm guessing it was probably changed due to some of the issues I just mentioned with that third design and some of the accusations. Uh, that's just me going out on a limb, but I'm guessing that's probably why it happened. But this new design for Slipcover C looks absolutely awesome in my opinion. I'm super excited for it, but I wanted to quickly share that with you guys. Uh, there's no details on when the pre-order is going to happen, but there's speculation that hopefully it'll be the summer sometime. So probably, you know, I don't know, July, give or take, maybe, because I imagine they're going to want to try to get it put in time for, uh, for Halloween this year anyway. I can't see them waiting another whole year. That wouldn't really uh, make much sense at this point when it's come this far. So hopefully we'll get a release for that soon and yeah, I'm guessing summertime. So continuing with some convention news, uh, the Edmonton Expo actually just announced uh, a few guests and one of them caught my eye and that is none other than Rose McGowan. Yes, Rose McGowan, who was the first one that caught my eye at the Calgary Expo. She was the first announcement that made me go, hmm, that's a reason to go. So, if you know the story, you will know that not too long after it was announced that the cast of Scream was coming, just like that. And, uh, you know, long story short, the Expo, the Calgary Expo, was a big success. So the Calgary Expo was a huge success for the Scream crew. I know their lineups were really full pretty much the entire time, you know, except for, of course, guys like Jamie and uh, Laurie Metcalf and stuff. Their lines weren't quite as uh, 
is busy, of course, as you know, Nab Square or certainly Skeet or Matthew. Uh, their lineups were pretty crazy. Um, anyway, so far we only have Rose McGowan and uh, a few others, but I mean, Rose is the one that's, of course, caught my eye. I would love to have her sign my poster that I wasn't able to get her to sign last time. So um, that's cool that I'm hopefully going to get an opportunity for that. You know, knock on wood, she doesn't have to cancel. As if you know the story from Calgary, she ended up having to cancel and she was the only screen guest that uh, was booked and wasn't able to make it. So here she is coming to Edmonton now, which is cool. Um, I would imagine she probably heard of the success in Calgary and thought, well, it's too bad I missed it. And I could go to Edmonton, you know, which isn't super far for some, right? Another three, three and a half hour drive for most. So uh, that'll be cool if um, she does come here in September and you know, that's like a half hour drive for me. So that's much, much better. And I'll be able to stay there on the weekend, hopefully, and, uh, and do a little cosplay. That's the goal anyway, being so close to home, it makes things much, much easier. But um, as I mentioned before, Calgary's lineup is always a little more, you know, star studded. It's a little bigger. So Edmonton's is usually, um, not quite as jam-packed with stars so I guess we'll see what happens Edmonton's is a three-day Friday Saturday Sunday and Calgary is a four Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday so that tells you right there that so uh, it's already bigger just in uh, production alone <laughs> all right so getting into the pickups now uh, speaking of steelbooks I recently picked up this awesome steelbook copy of the crow in 4k now, what happened here is I sort of missed the boat on the first round when they went up for pre-order. I just didn't realize they were already there, and by the time I did, it was too late. So I raced to um, Zavi, and I got a copy here of the Crow Steelbook through them, so that's why it has the, the UK uh, rating on the front. But I was really happy I was able to pick up a um, copy of the Steelbook. It's a beautiful looking Steelbook. As you can see, I haven't opened it yet. But uh, really, really beautiful art on it. And uh, one of my favorite movies, you know, I've really, really loved this movie um, since its release. And of course, it's tragic story behind uh, Brandon Lee, who was just magnificent in it. Um, I only have it on DVD, actually, and it's in a, it's in a split pack with uh, another film. So I've never really had a nice standalone copy of The Crow other than my VHS copy. Um, and that one had the Brandon Lee interview at the front, uh, the last one that he did, which was kind of eerie because he talks about death and everything, of course, considering his character. Um, anyway, really cool steelbook. I'm glad I got, I got a hold of this because, man, they sure go fast. The steelbooks, if you don't hop on them right away, you're going to be out of luck or you're going to have to buy them online secondhand from somebody who is charging way more than they paid which really sucks you know i wish people were, if they were going to do that they're a little cooler about it and maybe charge ten dollars extra you know made a modest profit didn't have to charge 50 60 you know double the price what it's worth and just absolutely rip people off that sucks Especially when you see they're like 20 available. It's like, what? Yeah. Anyway, really cool to get a copy of that steelbook. I love the look of this sucker. All right, guys. So like I said, I do have some pickups that I want to show you guys. I got a couple of t-shirt pickups um, as well as some new vinyl I wanted to share with you. But I'm going to do that for the next video. I'm going to try to get that recorded right away today so that I at least have it coming down the road. I'm definitely still working on some new content for you guys and I do apologize that I just haven't been able to get on nearly as often as I wanted to. And I still am working on that one um, thing I was gonna show you on those old school ninja movies as well. But it's something, it's sort of put on the back burner for now because so much other stuff is going on that I gotta talk about. So I'll get to that eventually. I know there's not a lot of you there looking forward to that one so much anyway. But uh, just for the couple people that have ever asked me about it, uh, that one is eventually coming too. So stay tuned. Sorry for the delay and I uh, appreciate you watching as always. Take care.